What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Rift. My name is Terrence, and today we're gonna continue the trend of exploring emotionally resonating VR experiences by taking a look at a world not so different from our own. The world of The Walking Dead. Quick side note before we get into the video, for those of you who haven't played this game, I've done my best to only include footage from probably around the first 30 minutes to hour of the game, um, including the tutorial. For those of you who have played it and don't care about spoilers, I'm sorry, you're not gonna get very many. I've done that intentionally because I want people to look at this review and then go play this game because I think it's worth it. Um, well, <laughs> once I break it down and review it, you tell me if you think it's worth it, I guess. I'm gonna tell you what I think. All right, enough of me rambling and expositing. Let's get into the video. In the nearly 10 years since the show debuted on the AMC network, not much has changed. I still like zombies. I still like video games. I still like video games featuring zombies. And I still find my newest shows on Netflix. In fact, the first time I ever watched The Walking Dead was when I rented season one on DVD from Netflix back in like 2011, I think. I get it, I'm old, you don't have to point it out. Due to its astounding popularity, it's no surprise that The Walking Dead had a variety of spin-offs and other materials found through a variety of other mediums, including books, uh, spin-off TV shows, of course, and of course, games. While the episodic Telltale game series has a special place in my heart, we're not going to be focusing on that today. Today we're going to focus on The Walking Dead's first foray into virtual reality with The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners. Within your first hour of gameplay, one thing is abundantly clear. This world was not built for you to survive in. Quite the opposite, actually. This world was built like an American Ninja Warrior course from the early G4 TV days and your first obstacle is the warped wall. In most games I've played, the introductory tutorial stage is meant to be a breeze. In Saints and Sinners, the tutorial level is more of a calibration tool for players to test the capacity of their heart. I have yet to find myself laughing at this game. To make matters worse, you'll soon realize that survival, while important, is only one of the many pieces to this dastardly puzzle. You'll also need to build social relationships and craft weapons that'll later be essential to your survival. The more I played this game, the more I felt like an extra trying to survive in a Blade movie. Loot in the daytime, rest in the night. Failing to do so will make an already difficult task nearly impossible. And of course, you can't talk about game mechanics in VR without mentioning immersion. I'm happy to say that Saints and Sinners has no issue excelling in this area. The ambient sound, the environments, the voice acting are all excellent. Helping to create an experience that embeds the player into the post-apocalyptic world of The Walking Dead. I can't tell you how many times early in my playthrough I scared myself simply by hearing my own footsteps or just hearing the wind blowing in the distance and being like, oh my god, what was that? <laughs> the combat in this game, while somewhat unforgiving to the seated player, is incredibly fun and the controls are fairly easy to get a grip on. See what I did there? Get a, get a grip on? Get, yeah, never mind. There's nothing more satisfying than grabbing a walker by the face and throwing it down a flight of stairs. And I have to say there's nothing I appreciate more than a developer that knows how to instill fear, old school style, through realistic character balancing. In this case, limited resources, questionable social engagements, and atrocious endurance. Maybe I could jog a seven minute mile, but I'm not gonna be sprinting it. And I know what you're thinking, you could do it. Well, yeah, you could today, but imagine that you're barely getting enough food and water. Now combine that with exhaustion because you spend all your waking and resting hours wondering if you're going to make it through the day. Now imagine yourself sprinting at a UIL record-breaking speed for a prolonged period while dealing with all those aforementioned things. A little bit more difficult now, right? As annoying as features are like these in most games, Something like limited sprint time actually improved my immersion in this game, which of course made me enjoy it even more. But like anything involving the Walking Dead brand, having some good means also having some bad. Saints and Sinners bad can be summed up the same way as some of my own bad decisions. One word, repetition. Missions beginning and ending in the same place is fine. Again, that brings us some sort of semblance of reality through connectivity. The bad comes in what you do during your waking hours. 
you'll start the game killing zombies and scavenging for supplies and you'll have a great time doing it. That is, for the first hour. In a game estimated at nearly 20 hours, the last thing I want to do for the entirety of the game is the first thing I did. In a game that considers itself an action RPG, diversity of gameplay should have been its selling point above having the Walking Dead brand stamped in its coding. Games like Borderlands 2 have been able to bring me back time and time again over several years because I have a multitude of characters to choose from and each one has its own playstyle and then on top of that I have a multitude of weapons to select from. This changes gameplay every time I boot the game. With The Walking Dead Saints and Sinners, I really do feel like I'm wash, rinsing, and repeating. And I think, in this sense, it would confuse even Mr. Miyagi. At the end of the day, Saints and Sinners will be one of my most memorable and breathtaking VR experiences. But do I recommend it? Well, that depends. Do you have a capable PC and VR headset? Then, yeah, sure, check it out. Otherwise, stick to Telltale's venture into the zombie world. Season 1 of that game, to this day, is one of my favorite story-driven gaming experiences, and an experience that I recommend to Walking Dead and gaming fans alike. That does it for this video. If you guys enjoyed this new format, and if you heard my cat in the background, leave me a like and drop me a comment below. If you guys want to recommend anything for me to check out next, be sure to drop me a comment below as well. If you like the video, of course, like I said, drop a like. And if you want to see more, hit that subscribe button, because baby, we gonna make more. I just got this, this new setup. We gotta make more. Don't worry, I'll smooth it out, and eventually I will finish unpacking as well. Hey, thank you guys for watching so much. This has been a pleasure to be back making these videos. Until the next video, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.